Right, so we're going to make a fishing video. A fishing video, is it? Yes, it is, man. But, eh, uh, this one does not contain any fish. What? You have no fish on your fishing video? No, I do not have fish on my fishing video. <laughs> but this man will tell you exactly what is on the video. Why, I let him go tell you about my fishing gear. <laughs> yes, I... I did say I was going to make a video about my, uh, the fishing gear I use, the rods, the reels, uh, terminal trap, tackle, uh, cameras, uh, lighting, uh, even my uh, stuff I use for producing the videos. So, it should make for an interesting video. Uh, you'll see what I use and there's nothing expensive or anything about it. So. Yeah, you lad, let's get back to it. Okay, so here we are, we're doing the first part of the videos. Uh, we'll do the fishing rods and reels, etc. Uh, as you can see, the, the hair's a bit long. It's been a couple of months and with this Corvid, there's not a barber's anywhere and none of my family cut hair decent, so I'm stuck with my mop. Get used to it. I may just let it grow long and grow beard. And wild man of Borneo. But uh, let's get back to the video. I, yeah, but I'll do the, the beach rods first, and then the uh, boat rod, and then uh, what I use as my spinner rods. So, first off is my Sonics. Uh, you all have watched my videos, you know. I like these, I like these rods. Uh, casting weight, five to seven ounces. And you can really hammer this. Hey. Before I bought this, I was hearing problem people people with problems uh, with their uh, Sonics breaking. But I think that was the shorter ones because I've had uh, I know a few people that are using the longer ones. These are 14 feet. A uh, five to seven ounces, and a uh, it doesn't seem to be having much of a problem. So maybe something to do with the, the length of them. I don't know. But as I say, you can really f hammer these things, and always use them with a uh, the CT CT rocket. <laughs> you can get these off YouTube. A uh, no, try eBay for about a hundred pound or something. But uh, there are places charging about two or three hundred pounds for these. Unbelievable! I've got these for ninety-nine pound each. That was a few years ago, like. But uh, yeah, uh, they're basically they're uh, beach casting reels. Uh, I always use them for that. I put fifteen pound line on. Uh, they meant to have four brake blocks in, I've removed two, I'm only operating with two brake blocks, so... With that, and this length of rod, I can send this into oblivion. If I've ever really felt it like it. But uh, there's normally no need for that kind of casting. Not, well, not up, uh, not up here anyway, not on the east coast of Scotland. Most, most of the fish are pretty close in, so... Yeah, so, I've got this one. Hey, well, we've got Mark Pierre. Next is my favourite overall rods. Abu Severns. SX. I bought these quite a few years ago. Well, this is a second so second set. I lost one set of a <coughs> in Locative. And as, as far as I'm aware, they're still lying in there. We have a couple of splash thirties on them, big mo players. So, yeah, these are a uh, what are they about thirteen foot? The cast four to eight ounce, and this could throw a lead. A uh, four ounce, five ounce lead with a load of bait, it just sends it flying. And uh, the reason I bought these was I've seen a bit. Uh, I've seen a clip for the Sea Angler magazine or something. Or somebody. Somebody pulling in a 170 pound uh, skate or something for up, up north of Scotland. 
on land with one of these and land in it. And I thought, that's the road I want. You can deal with anything. So, yeah, so I've got a pair, pair of these. Severns. Nowadays, they're actually uh, they're quite hard to get a hold of. Uh, you don't see too many of them for sale, and when I do, they're always far away, and people won't post them. <laughs> I wouldn't mind another one just to keep in, in case something happens to these. But uh, as you see, I've got this uh, pen 535. This is what I use with this rod and uh, Sonic. If I'm going heavy duty fishing uh, for bigger fish, use these Pen 535 non mag. These are originals. I don't go for magnetic stuff. I like old old school. And I've never had any problems with this. It'll deal with anything. Uh, and as for casting the rod, this one can send a. Five inch light flying as well without a problem. Next, we have a pair of Esprits. Once again, Abu has a theme running through this, isn't there? <laughs> I do love Abu equipment. A 30 foot beach caster, once again, will cast 4 to 8 ounce and can can't really send it flying. I've got a chip over there. But, uh, yeah, I bought these. I don't, <laughs> don't ask me why I bought them. Uh, they were cheap, so I bought, I bought a couple of them cheap. But I basically use these for uh, like macro fishing or lightweight fishing or whatever, or just standby rods. Uh, I can give a good cast. I'll give them that. Yeah, 48 ounce once again. That seems to be the run of the mill with uh, Ab Abu Rods. Always 48 ounces. So, there we go. The famous Abu Grip. I, I love them. They're easy to hold. You get a good hold grip of your rod and your reel with, with these on. So, that's that. Nice colouring. Blue. I'm watching the sky because we're due some bad weather in about four hours' time. <laughs> so. Next up is my boat rod. This is a... Uh, <laughs> need I say more? Abu Severn Uptider. Uh, this has got a, fun, uh, a little bit of a technique. Used like this, a handle like that, it's basically a boat rod. <laughs> Twist and turn, lock. You've got an uptider. This will cast up to 10 ounces. Uh, I bought this because a boy I went out with in a boat from uh, St Andrews, he had one of these. And I see, seen how it handled 10 ounces of lead and all the fish he was catching, I thought, good one. So, yeah, it's a uh, 10 foot, as I said, will cast up to 10, 10 ounces. So, it's a fairly beefy piece of kit. I've yet to... <laughs> Squeaky. I've yet to catch anything big on it, but uh, it does catch fish, I know that. And it likes a mackerel. <laughs> <coughs> You'll see me coughing in that, that's a... Uh, I've got COPD problems in my lungs. <laughs> that's why that is. Which is why I don't travel too far when I'm fishing or that. I can't. Basically, I can't travel. Right, now to spinning. And... Yeah, 
Well, yet again, it's Abu. It's a devil, Abu Devil. And it casts 40 to 80 gram, 10 foot long. It's a nice, nice spinning rod. Uh, I've got a few pollock in that with this. And uh, I like it. I normally, I just put this reel on, but uh, normally I'd have something similar, similar to this with a 10 pound or maybe up a bit to 15 if I know there's something bigger swimming in the water or there's strong currents and I need to fight to get a fish out I'll put 15 on but uh, basically straight through 10 pound and as I say a lovely piece of kit nice and light as well and I can't even remember where I bought this <laughs> that's, that's going back a while and finally another spinning rod uh, this one is a legacy, a legacy. it's a uh, 2.10 meters long, casts 20 to 40 grams. A more or less class as a lightweight rod. It's only, it's only about what? Six foot. A normally use a small reel like this one. A serial. And this <laughs> I actually won a few years ago on one of the fishing forums. A uh, species, catching species. I caught the most, so I won. So <laughs> I got this. A uh, lovely piece of kit. It's brilliant for eels and that. You get a uh, because I normally I normally use a uh, six pound, five six pound line on it straight through a uh, size flat seven. Uh, no, size five or six fresh water little bits of ragworm. And that gets the fishies, the little fishies. But, eh, uh, yes. Lovely setup, nice and clean. Well, we could actually do with cleaning up one of those. That, uh, I use a gear, it gets thrown in the back of the car, it gets thrown in the cor in a corner in the house, and when I want, want it out, it just gets pulled out again. Don't always clean the stuff, but the, the reels that uh, make sure are clear, clean, like. You've got to clean your reels, or one day you'll catch a decent fish and your reel will give up. I've had that happen on a, a wee red abu I had. It was old, and it was it was working fine until I started catching mackerel, <laughs> mackerel three or four at a time. I <laughs> just couldn't take it. Ripped the guts out of it. So it's now unrepairable. So yes, that's basically all the rods I use. All the rods I need. I, I do have another couple of boat rods and that, that I've picked up over the years, but uh, and an Abu f a four eight four. A that is old school. I would love to get, there's an eye needing fixed in it, or maybe two eyes needing fixed. And I would love to get a, a, what is it, Mitchell 498, big fixed spool. I'd love to get that back out there. 498, you can put, what, <laughs> seven or eight hundred yards of 15 pound line on these reels. These are fixed spool, but they're big and they're deep. Uh, when I used them uh, years ago, I used to put the shoelaces in, really tighten it up, and then tape over that, and then put the line on. And every now and again, take the line off, twist it around, and use it the other way. <laughs> Make the line last twice as long. So that's that's us. That's the rods, as you can see. And uh, the roses will be coming up in a little while. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So that's to conclude with the fishing, uh, fishing rods and reels. And next, I'm, I'm not sure what I'll put up next, but uh, it will be something.
Flashbang, what a what a picture, what a picture, what a photograph. Oh yeah, cameras. Well, I normally take two out with me, a uh, video camera that I'm using now, and a stills camera. Uh, specifically this one. A little Sony. Takes 20 megapixel pictures. Uh, it can also do a uh, hard high definition video as well. I've never tried I've never tried to uh, video on this, but uh, all the little pictures you see up here with the little fish are taken with these. This I keep getting these soaked and wet and washed out. I go through cameras like nothing else. And here's the camera I'm using now. You're thinking that's impossible. Well, it is. <laughs> the one I'm using now is a new one. This is an old one that got beaten up and battered on the beaches, and it's now worthless. But uh, it's good to show you what the camera is that I'm using. It's a uh, Panasonic SD60 uh, video camera. I uh, it does videos and it also takes still pictures, but the still pictures are only 2.1 megapixel, which is garbage actually. I uh, zoom is 35 zoom, it has 60 digital, and a uh, What's the other one? It's 60 and 1,500 times. Which makes it good for doing videos of the moon. Which I have done on a couple of occasions. It's taking forward videos of the moon is quite, it's pretty hard actually. Especially when you're zooming in on it, you have to make sure this is solid on the ground. Or solid somewhere, wherever you've got it. If there's a slight movement, it, is, it swings halfway across the moon. But uh, yeah, this is a this is the one I use for all, all the videos. They I, I buy them second hand. I don't actually know if you can buy this brand new or not. But they uh, I normally buy them second hand for about well, anything from fifty to a hundred pound. Uh, you get bargains on these because say uh, quite a few people have still got them in the boxes, complete with all the bits and bobs to go with it, which makes it uh, makes it a good buy. And I've now got. Uh, the battery lasts about an hour and 45 minutes. I uh, carry four batteries. But I don't, I don't do continuous recording with this. I can't. A, a card in it will not accept that length of video. And I don't think anybody that does videos fishing actually does continuous recording. They must have some, some card in it if they do, I tell you. But, uh, yeah. So I normally. When I've, when I've caught a fish, that's when the camera goes on until I've shown you the fish and whatnot, and then it goes back off again. I, I never have it on all the time. And it takes the card up to about 64 gig, I think. Uh, the one that's in here just now is 32, so I can get about four hours, four hours recording time on it, which is uh, more than enough for most fishing trips. Because you end up recording a lot of stuff uh, that you don't actually use. All the bits where you slip your trip up <laughs> and you catch nothing. Uh, so there's a lot of that actually goes in the bin. I often thought about making a, making a video with all the bits and bobs but I delete all of them to try and save space on my hard drive. I've got one terabyte hard drive on my computer and that is nearly f something couple of hundred megabytes for being full. I need a bigger one. Like six terabytes or nine, eight, six or ten terabytes. I need a massive card to save all this. But uh, yeah, anyway that's a video camera and I normally have that standing on a tripod. Which is, uh, which is quite good. Uh, but some places you can stand with your tripod up and you get all these cyclers running past and clipping it and such like. We did the same with the tripods as well, they club them, their, their heads down, their arses up and they're just bolting by like a 
Why are you flashing the blue ring? And they cop your, cop your equipment and they don't know about it. And they wonder why you're shouting and swearing at them. That's expensive gear, man. So, that's uh, the two cameras I take out fishing. And they, uh, as you have seen from the, from the videos, they are pretty good. Ooh, shine a light, shine a light, shine a light on me. Or oh, everybody shine a light on me. Talking about lights. Here we go. <laughs> I normally take uh, two lights out with me when I'm fishing. Sometimes I'll, t I'll just carry an ordinary torch in the, the box. Just in case, because you never know. Uh, my headlight is actually Lenser. It doesn't have a no number on it. I've had it for a, a good couple of years now, like, and works pretty good. You get everything from the dot to widespread, and you get high, mid, and low uh, lighting on it. Uh, it can last for a good four hours or so. I, or maybe more on the low setting. If you have it on high, then that really eats a battery. But uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, you've got a big light on that it often pays to have this to bait up and whatnot. So yeah, uh, batteries in the back there. But I think it's a, I don't know if it's a one but one cell battery or a th three different ones. And, uh, you just plug the charger in the bottom, charge them up. Everything I everything I own can be charged from USB. Uh, which makes it handy, I can charge it in the car or I have a big uh, portable generator thing in the car for jump starting cars. That can uh, operate USB plugs as well so you can charge them off of that. Which comes in pretty handy actually. <laughs> uh, next is this. I'll maybe read it for here. Rechargeable foot light. This one is only this is only 200 watt. It's what I use at night for shining whole areas. It's not bad for camera work. Uh, you actually need a brighter light for camera work, but this one seems to seems to work not too bad. You get four hours of light off of it uh, because it's only 200 watt. And I got this from what nineteen pound I think this was because we're on sale, we're on discount at Screwfix or one of the places. And every now and again they have them up for sale, uh, and they're certainly worth it because you you do actually get a pretty wide spread of light. Uh, no had any problems with it. It'll handle rain and everything. It's watertight. The wee section in the bottom there you just. In the bottom, you just plug your charger in, either mains or a uh, USB. Once again, it takes uh, four or five hours to charge up, but uh, yeah, it's there's a bit of weight in them. But it's there's nothing too too heavy, light. so and it's, it swivels, so you can move it around and. Also, also turns out we understand as well. It's quite a good light actually. <coughs> as I say, it lasts four hours, but you get bigger ones. But the, if you go for the higher power ratings, it actually goes lower in uh, the length of thing you can actually use it. I think there's what's it? I'll read this again. It's tw twenty watt, not two hundred. Jesus man, I can't even read it with my glasses on. Yeah, you get up to 50 watt, but I think the 50, the 50 watt only lasts maybe two and a half to three hours. Full, uh, well, you only get full power. So, yeah, that's the only thing about this. You, you can't turn the power up or down. It's either, you're either on or off. But uh, it does the job. And I get half a decent photo, uh, video on it. It's, Looks a bit blurry at times, it's not quite perfect, but uh, it's better than seeing nothing. I mean, trying to make a video with just a, just a headlight at night, uh, wouldn't it work? So, we've just got them. 
So that's our lighting. I'm a train, 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 yeah. Nope. Not trains. But we are talking line. Fishing line. Uh, on my CT mags, uh, on my CTs, uh, multipliers, I have £15 line. Uh, normally it would be Diaba Tournament, this stuff. Oh, I, lo I love using that. I've, I've used it for years. Uh, but on this one I've actually got a uh, Diaba line. I can't remember what it is now because I got one spool and it filled both reels. Uh, but it's actually thinner than this. Same strength and everything. This is 3.35, uh, this is actually about 3.2. Uh, so you get, a wee, you get a wee bit more on it. But uh, it's still as effective, still as strong. Knot strength is just as good. I don't have knots bursting or breaking. So, yeah, that's the main line. I uh, also have a shot leader on there, 50 pound. Always have shot leader on your reels. Whether you're casting two ounce, three, four, five, whatever you're casting, you need shot leader. And the shot leader must be 10 times what your weight is. If you're fishing with a two ounce weight, your shot leader should be 20 pound. I normally, 99% of the time, I'm fishing with 5 ounce lead, so my shot leader's 50. It would actually be better at 60. But uh, 50, I've got 50 on just now, and that, that does quite adequately. As the, the shot leader I use is actually suffix, suffix zippy. It's meant to be stronger than other lines and whatnot. Uh, I haven't had a problem with it. Uh, that's, I've never heard it actually snapping or breaking and it's uh, a good knot line as well because as I said the knots don't come out so yeah well, this the pen 535 uh, is what I use for rough fishing and what not heavy duty fishing it's garbage on it, it's not clean <laughs> but uh, this has 30 pound line main line 30 pound because I never expect to catch anything big. I don't go after big beastie. One day I'll catch something, I'll be disappointed because the line will not take it. But uh, here we go, £30 anyway. And again, this has shock leader on it. Whatever your real mic, a fixed pool or multiplier, you always need your shock leader. Uh, uh, I don't use braid, I just, I just use my, my monofilament. I've never tried braid. I've heard it's meant to be good. But, uh, it's a thought of cutting it against the rocks and that. Uh, I've heard it can be cut, cut quite easy, but I don't know. I've never used it, so I won't complain about it. So next, uh, traces. Uh, I've got a two-hoop pattern roster here. Uh, it's what I normally use for fishing. I, it's what I call naked fishing. No. <laughs> That's arrestable. Yeah. You get your photos in the wrong places doing that. Uh, <laughs> that is two patterns there. Uh, when I say naked, I mean nothing. Just plain line. Uh, there's no beads, there's no flashy things, there's nothing. I like the bait to do the work. So, yeah. At the top of which, I have a, well you can see that, a QF swivel. Uh, I don't know how many people actually use these now. I'm finding they're harder to get hold of and get pretty damn expensive too, actually. But uh, the thing with these is, and get close. You've got this, this piece inside of which I don't know if you can actually see in there. I'm pointing this the wrong way. Inside of that, there's a little, a like lipped bit piece. This is a piece I have on my, my shot leader on the road on the reel. 
you'll notice it's got it's got a split and a little little hole. I hope you can see that because I can't see that one but with my glasses. Uh, the pin out of there. My glasses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's better. I can see now. Yeah, you can see it there. The hole for the little piece out of the middle of there actually goes into, and then you just slide it around. Let's see if I can get this. <laughs> there you go. It just goes in, slides along, and that's it. Your main your uh, shot leader would be on that side. That's on your rig. That will never come apart. I've heard people say they 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 can fall apart, but I have never ever had it them break. The only the, the only downside is has something but bigger to pick up with. But uh, I can live with that. But I've used these. I don't know how long now, since the day they since the day they come out, I've been using them, and they're, they're handy when you're uh, fishing like competitions and you want to quite change. There are easier things. There's get clippy things like that. You can put your traces on, just pull on, pull off. I use these for my weights. Pull off, pull on. So that's the top. Then we come down and there's the first hook. There's a second hook and there's the weight. That is about what? Four foot. Uh, I don't actually measure them. Uh, can be anything from three, three and a half foot to about five foot in length. Same as the hook lengths, they they can be virtually any length as long as it don't, as long as when you cast it doesn't actually grab the other hook on the way out. That suits me. So, as I say, this is a, a, a one I most commonly use. At this moment, these ones have got one of the hooks on them. I've got uh, others with size 2 or uh, no 2 -o. I've got others with size 2 that I use as well. If I catch nothing with these, I'll sometimes clip down to the smaller sizes. But, uh, yeah. <coughs> and this is weight. This one's not been fixed up to use. This is just as, as they are finished coming from the light pot. Clean, cleaned up light but uh, unfinished. I've also got a couple of three hook traces, uh, two up one down, uh, one o hooks with uh, the bottom hook a size two or smaller. This is my weight. Four legs. As you see the straight the straight legs were actually bent. So they're all pointing out the way. You just clip them together like that. Put the elastic band round twice. And that'll hold quite well. It holds in most conditions. If you need something stronger, just put the elastic band on once more and it'll hold like an anchor. It will be it can be difficult to get back out when it's got three bands uh, three bands round it. But uh, and I'll leave the long a long wire uh, stops it uh, st stops it be jointing on and getting bounced about in the sand and gravel and everything so it doesn't wear away the knots so yeah I've used them for years as well so if you ever ever on a beach and you find one of these with rubber bands on them there's a good chance it's mine uh, there are another couple of guys using these I've seen them uh, I make them myself, 
the mould I got, I got the wrong mould, it wasn't drilled so I had to drill it myself which is why they're not quite perfect. But uh, they work and it does for me. And when you're fishing for something bigger, you need to pull the rigs. I like these wee things, these wee black things, these pulley pulleys for making for making the traces. It makes life easy. It's, it saves using all the different swivels and all for not. So yeah, the bead the bead is only there to stop the they're not getting chaffed in there. Or it won't get a uh, torn in there, but it will get stuck. So you have to stop that from uh, being getting caught in that. And on the top of that, once again, I've got my weak UF and bead on the swivel down to the hook. There's a 5 -oh hook there and a, I think that's a 3 -oh hook. That's a pulley, pulley panel. If it was just a pulley rig, it would just have the one hook. That's... I don't know what that hook is. Uh, I bought a packet of hooks. My God, they are strong. They are indestructible. I don't know what they are. Sharp as sod. So we can't fish for them, like. <laughs> but we can. We keep trying. So we go that. Onto a wee clip there. tie it at that end, then this end, I can actually clip the weight, uh, I actually clip the weight on there, then when it's cast out, that breaks off. Because I put a, <coughs> the main line is, the main line on there is 50, going to the hook, the hook length is 30, uh, the main line ties onto this, this wee piece and here I have 15 so if it gets caught up and gets snagged I will be able to break it <coughs> as I was just saying about that 15 pound line on the, the CT it is, it is a strong line so it does, it does take a bit of pulling to break it but I do eventually get it out so there we go and then again, I don't have any actual measurements or anything. I just, I just make them on my own and uh, do my own thing. Use as little amount of add-ons as possible to the, the hooks, the lines and everything. A lot of people like putting a lot of bits and bobs on, especially on the, the two hook uh, paternosters. I see a lot of people putting green beads on and everything. Uh, wait a minute, I'll show you something. And this is our... Many, many years ago, when I first started fishing, eh, uh, okay, I'll just leave that on. We used, eh, uh, I used the traces, the two, two hook pattern roster, and I used to use standoffs. Eh, uh, they were expensive to buy. Well, I thought they were expensive at the time because I was unemployed and couldn't afford them. I was working on a budget. I think that's why I always work on a budget when I'm fishing, everything cheap. Cheap and cheerful, but it must work. Here we go. Something you, you probably rarely see nowadays, because I think they've banned them, if they're not. Uh, cotton buds with a plastic uh, stick. Well, I'll call it a stick. I 
I'm just cutting the ends off to show you, but normally we would I would clean the clean all the wheel off and try and keep as much of it as possible. You would end up with this. And all you do with that is cut a small V in the top there. I don't know if this is going to go through there. No, it's not. I'll cut this line. Yeah. God damn it, I'm shaking. Uh, right, there we go. What we what we normally do, we cut a V-shape in there, and then slide it right up, right up to the knot, and you would have a standoff like that. You never, you wouldn't need to put any beads or anything. You can tie something just in front of it to stop it moving, but. Uh, most of the time it's, it's secure there on the knot that you've, that you've tied that on. And that's how we used to have our traces. But as I say, I don't, I'm not sure if you could still buy these anymore. I know they were trying, trying to ban them. Eh, they're choking up toilets and everything. They're bad for the environment. Which they are, because they're plastic and... It doesn't make sense anymore. Eh, as for mackerel, mackerel traces, there's only one four hook tinsel trace. I love the tinsel traces. I tried other things. I I, okay, they've caught fish, but I'll, I always feel better when I'm fishing with these. And in the middle of the mackerel season, you cannot buy them, which is why I buy them uh, out of season. You can get them a bit cheaper too, if you buy them three or fours at a time or something. So yeah, hey, what else? Oh, floats. I use little for yellow floats. I've got floats like this, different shapes, and got bubble floats and whatnot, and little little weights to go on them. Uh, I think they're about half half ounce weight, which uh, works good with them. Or, if you can't be bothered, you can buy complete kits. You get the float, you get the uh, weight, you get hooks already tied to line. Hooks already tied to line. And little stoppers and beads and whatnot that you need. Everything in one, th one kit. That's a lead of 30 gram. A uh, 30 gram, we're talking what? Two and a half, two and a half. Uh, an ounce? No, wait a minute. Two and a half. Ah, 30. That's an ounce. That's quite a heavy cat, actually. Uh, yeah, that, that would do for catching all the big fish uh, if you're chasing pollock or something. Uh, pollock or even mackerel, but. Uh, yeah, I normally, for float fish, for mackerel, I normally like to fish a bit lighter than that. Uh, yeah. So. What else have we got in here? A little knife, multi-variety, it's got screwdrivers, and bottle openers, and can openers. And I don't know if I think fishermen are all drunks. <laughs> but it's got to be screwdrivers and everything. Not perfect, but uh, handy. That's the word. Handy. I've got various uh, swivels. If you want to make the two hook pattern roster the easy way, that is the thing to use. Your main line going down, your main line going up, and then you just have your uh, hook length coming over there. You can have two of them. There you go. Uh, that's okay for close in fishing, but uh, I think the more knots you have in your keer, the, uh, it loses a bit of strength 
well, every time you tie a knot, your line loses strength, but if you've got a whole load of knots in, in there, you're actually losing strength. Got uh, American snaps. Uh, yes, they say you can use them for weights and casting out. I do not, I would not want to cast out with that. I've had, I used to use them for weights and cast them out and I don't know how many legs I've had go flying off of these things. Even the bigger ones, they, they tend to, sp the stress of the weight pulling through the air actually pulls them apart. But they are good for close in fishing. Uh, yep, that's what they're good for, close in fishing. That's all I would use them for. Then you get normal uh, swivels. That's an old one. I know one older than one. A modern swivel. There must be one in there. Oh, there we go. I should have tweeters. There's an older one. There's a the modern ones. Small, thin. And very, very strong. I think that's actually about eighty pound. That one. I'll show you the difference. I don't know what the poundage in that was, but I would say about thirty or forty. Uh. Swivels like that, you, you'll often find uh, if you're walking the beach and picking up kit, you'll often find swivels. Piece of advice: don't use the swivels. If they've been lying in the water, if they're the old ones and they've been lying in the water for ages, they will be wasted. My little box here, I carry black tape. We pair of cheap wire cutters. I had a uh, nail cutters, uh, well, line cutters. I actually prefer using nail, nail, uh, nail clippers. I always carry hooks and whatnot and lighters and uh, screwdrivers and my hook out I, this is what I use for taking the line out of flounders or place or any flatfish if the hook's kind of deep in you, you need this Let's see. That's in the fish. You put that through the gills, and then you would wrap your line a couple of times around that section there, and then just pull it out, pull it back through the gill. And done properly, the, should, the hook should actually pull out, or maybe it'll be a bit of pressure, but pull the hook out, and then you can just pop it straight out of his mouth. But that is what I use. I, they were selling them on eBay, but when I got them they were all sharp and uh, I didn't think much of them. So I, I cut them so that everything is in line. That cannot catch anything on the way in or on the way out because it's a small hole and the hole, the hole is in line. If you have like a bit sticking out to pull the line, that's sticky out, but will catch in the fish, in the fish's gills. The last thing you want to do is destroy the gills. So, there you go. I think I bought about three of them for a pound or something, they were selling them cheap. But a uh, wee bit of clean up, wee bit of work. They work perfectly. Uh, what else? I was going to talk about my traces and that. Oh, I don't know what else we could talk about. I don't have it. I, for, in my box I also have this, my priest. Just basically a length of pipe, I think about that is filled with lead, it is heavy up the top there, and 
just all tape wrapped around there so you can hold it. That'll cause a lot of damage to anything you hit. <laughs> the thing is, I don't get a chance to use it often. <laughs> I may have been fishing for many years, but uh, a number of big fish I caught could be counted on one hand. Right, and these are always a good idea. Cutting boards. Oh, can I can't afford the cutting board. Go to Asda. As for about that one, and another two smaller ones. I got the I got the set for about two pound or three pound, and uh, they do pretty good. They're pliable and they'll take a lot of knife cutting and everything. Because the last thing you want to do is cut anything on brick or pavements or any other surface except for plastic. You'll just destroy your knife. And I know from experience from years ago, trying to sharpen up a knife that's been blunt on rock <laughs> is not easy, even with oil stones. Oil stones are fun. I also carry a book, Fishies, it tells, it's a hand guide to all the, pardon me, all the fishes of Britain and Europe. It is all that's for 1980, 1986, that's old, but it is good, a uh, dog fishes. Uh, rays and skates, it gives you all them. Perch, rod, eels, silver eels or freshwater eels, whatever you want to call them, and conger eels. Uh, all your brain. Dragon nets, sand eels, weavers, lesser weavers, even garnards. And of course, my favourite page, flatfish, all different types. One side is that, and if you turn the page, find another variety of flatfish. Oh, my battery's got dying. Okay, I'll cut and I'll come back. I'll hit switch this off. I'm running out of battery power. Right, we're back again. <laughs> two batteries, and I've got a box with four batteries, and two of them are dead. I think this is the last battery. So let's see how long we can go for in this. A yeah, I told you about everything in the wee bit before this. Now, uh, hooks and tying hooks on and everything. I basically use two knots. Two knots for everything. Uh, don't see the point in having it anymore. So I'll show you. Pardon me. I'm drinking too much coffee, that's what I'm got a big hook and I've got orange line. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Hey, let's try and zoom in, in a bit. Hook in the line. And normally what I use is a... I've just run it up on the computer. It's actually an improved clinch knot. I didn't know what it was before that. I just knew it as a knot. First of all, you get it through the hole. All right. Helps when you've got glasses on. See at night, even with glasses, I can't see the wee one old hooks. Put the line through. Give it a twist. Two, three, four, five. Five times, well, anything from five to seven. Then you take the end and put it through the loop near the eye. That goes through there. 
then you've got the loop formed with putting the line through the eye. So you take that back, grab the end, pull it. Well, let's try that again. <laughs> because I'm trying to show you. There, uh, right. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Even good fishermen make mistakes. There we go. You got the you spun it round five times, anything up to seven. You got the loose piece of line, goes through the loop nearest the near the eye, goes through there, pull it back, you've got this end. Take that with your teeth. Soak it and pull it. It's not my lucky day. <laughs> it just isn't my lucky day. Let's try that again. If for no other reason, just to prove that I can do it. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. Through that loop. And back through there. Hold on to the loose bit with your tooth and pull the line. That's it. I've done it wrong before. But you're doing this, you're grabbing this bit with your tooth, also damp this with spit. And then pull it, pull it tight. That will not come out. That was nearly a joke, okay? That will not come out. Yeah, right. So there you go. That is a. Just to prove I can, I can do it. That is the knot I use for tying hooks on, for tying my a, swivels on. Uh, all kinds of attachments I, I, I put on with this. <coughs> there is one other knot I lose, I use. And this is for tying the main line to the leader. Remember, I spoke to you about the uh, shot leader. This is for tying the shot leader onto the main line. I have no idea what this is called. There is a version like it that I've seen online, but I haven't seen this. You take the line, oh, better, easier if I put it to the camera, eh? Take the line, put it in the loop, take the end through once, take the end through again, and gently pull it. This part would be done on the heavy line on your shot leader. So remember, that's your shot leader. Uh, I don't know if you can see this stuff. Yeah. <coughs> this is the main line. Now this, you've got your big loop there. This goes in the way that that line came out. So you can see the line is actually coming out that hole. This line goes in that hole. And then it goes in that hole. Stop shaking, Jesus. It goes in the other hole. And then you just pull it, pull the length of it, and it flattens out. Now, what you do next? You hold the line there. You've got a little loop in there, so keep that there. Wrap it around one, two, three, four, five. 
That'll get rubber in five times. It will go through that loop that you create it with your finger. Unless you've lost it. Go through that loop you create it with your finger. And then that loop there, it goes back into that. So it's basically similar to the the knot you're using for your uh, hook. And then all you do there Right, you pull it. But before it gets from there to there, you put a spit on this this one, the main line, the, uh, the figure eight. And pull it and make sure it's tight. Then you put a spit on the other line the main line and pull it. There you go. A nice little a nice right. A nice little knot. Oh. Now you clip it. Clip it with your nail thing, nail clippers there. there. Always making sure <laughs> you're cutting the right line. I've done this out when I've been out fishing. I had to put a new leader on and cut the wrong lines. That is annoying. It's sod. And there you go. Your leader knot. I don't have any problems with that knot. It, will, it doesn't come apart. It doesn't it's not too big to rip your finger apart, so that's fine. Uh, that's, that's all the, the only leader knot I've used since the day I started fishing. I was taught this by a guy, and I've never used anything else. So, that's that. Oh, sore my fingers. <laughs> Helps if you've got pl uh, pliers, I can sometimes give it a pull. But always rem remember when you're tying knots, moisten them. A uh, dry line doesn't go together too well. It can pull itself out of knots. And I think that's everything for this section. I had something written down to tell me what I'm, what I'm meant to be doing. See, you don't just do this off cam, you have stuff written down that tells you before or that you're doing things. Yeah. So that's that. You'd be wondering why the curtains are shut at the back, because there's too much light, and if the light comes through, you won't see me, you'll see yourself white clear, that's why the curtains are shut. It's not because the neighbours are nosy. <laughs> you should have seen them when they were trying to make the video of the, the fishing rods in. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that bit. So we'll call that the end of this this part, uh, and I'll come up with something else in a little bit. So keep watching. There's always something to see. Hey, here we are. I'm about to show you. Uh, Cyberlink Power Director. It's a program that I use for making my videos. But uh, first, I'll show you this. When I get the video from uh, out of the camera, the video camera, I'll load it into a folder. Then I'll number it, and then say underneath what it actually is, so I know exactly what I'm putting in, where I'm putting in. I that makes it a lot a lot easier than chasing about trying to find for your for pieces you're wanting for. Your... Let's try this. We'll go into we'll go into full mode 
there's storyboard sideshow and auto mode. There's a lot in this. I just use uh, this one. So here we are. Basically, this screen here is where everything, uh, where you bring your pieces of film video into. This is where you see it, and this is where you put place all your pieces of video and music, etc. So let's see. Um, I should have taken this sound off. Uh, what one am I looking for? That one. Yep, so I'll take this lot. And just open. It will slowly but surely appear in, in the box. Normally. There we go. <coughs> <coughs> this is like the second stage of the process. Uh, you'll get your video, pull it down. Uh, you, can, you can, I think you can run for, for hours actually making the video. And there's quite a lot of tracks, so you can actually have videos on top of videos and all this kind of For all doing all the fancy pieces, like the the start up to my video, yeah, there's about five or six different videos on my start up on the same page. That, that took a bit of figuring out, a bit of sorting. Uh, but we got there eventually. So normally I would get a video, I would place it in there, watch it, see where it needs cutting so you don't have too much space of nothing or just walking around or whatever. You trim it down, trim it down and then you, uh, once you get it to the way you like it, you start playing right. it. Uh, we're out once again. Uh, this time at Astra, there was here a couple of weeks back and this is actually Parts of my answer to their video I brought up just to let you see. Uh, yeah. So we've got this. I also normally download uh, photos which I take, and that's fine. That's fine. The videos you always see a lot of photo up here of the fish on uh, against the box and ruler. I always think that's good. Yeah. Uh, okay, standing holding the fish. It looks good, but when you see it against a real a ruler, it actually shows you what what size it actually is. It's sometimes not as big as it looks when it's in your hands. <laughs> yeah, you can fool a lot of people with cameras that way, but uh, no, not me. Uh, yep, yeah. as I said, you get the wee photo up there. Uh, also upload of the. Sections for starting the video, uh, sections for ending the video, like the taco shops and uh, etc. Uh, and then come down to the T and this text. There's various ways you can put up texts. There's about a hundred different different types of text you can put up. Uh, it's just a case of working your way through and see what you fancy. But uh, you've got this. And then you've got all of these. There's hundreds of these different uh, effects you could put onto the video. Uh, no. Let's try this. A damaged t damaged television. Right. Uh, we're out once again. Uh, this time at Astra, there was here a couple of weeks back. I remember. And him. didn't do it too well Oops. at all. I remember that with the old black and white TVs. <laughs> yeah, moved the area all over the place, the rabbit, rabbit ears. So you've got a... Uh, 
those effects. There's more, more effects, more add-ons you can put into your videos. And more bits and pieces. There's always something you can add. This is the texts, all the various texts. If you like Star Wars. Oops. There we go. It's running there. If you like Star Wars, well, there's a thing for you. Uh, there's a whole variety of stuff in there. Uh, then there's all these. Uh, oh, little add-ons and footnotes that have different effects on your videos as well. Uh, that's a sound, I think that's a sound for, for on the video itself. You turn it up, turn it up or down. But you can actually do that with these with these little buttons too. Uh, just right click on it, pull it up or pull it down to lower or raise the volume. Uh, this is the, the microphone. Uh, if you're wanting to do a video and uh, it's been too windy or it's been just a horrible day, you've not got a good recording, you go on, go on down here, you can actually shut off the sound from here and then record your own uh, sound or voiceover and then that goes down down here I think yeah it goes, goes down here and uh, put that in the thing with doing voiceovers you just do a normal voiceover you don't try lump sync because that is <laughs> that is hard to do I've done it on a couple of my singing videos and that. Sometimes it uh, lip sync, but oh god, it takes forever. It's not an easy thing to do. Then this is chapter settings for setting out the way, way your video will play, I think. I've never used that. A lot of the th things I find in here, I actually... Uh, Find on YouTube, Power Director, Power Director University. It's Mik Mikhail or Mike M Mikhail or something like that. Anyway, it does it does tons of videos and the, the amount of stuff you can do with these is unbelievable. So yeah, what I what I use it is very basic, but I do sometimes put odd wee bits and pieces in. And, like two people, two people talking and three people talking and their kind of videos, they, they take a bit of work. Not only on the camera, but in here as well. Uh, yeah, so that's basically the power director. That, uh, edit, and then you, can produ and then you produce. Which means actually making the video. have various <coughs> ways you can send them out, uh, file formats, uh, some of them will play in some things, some of them will play for other things, some of them are just for phones, some of them are for Windows Media, I just use AVC H264, uh, normally 1920 by 1850p, 50p, 40 megabytes. That is a uh, high definition. That works. That works for me. This goes. That can go away up to 4K. Uh, but this computer won't run that. Which is a pity. I need another computer to do that. I could upgrade this one, but it'd be probably be cheaper buying another computer. I don't know if that kind of cash at the moment, but uh, we'll get there eventually. Yeah, and uh, 
surround sound, 5.1, fader sound, you pick your various sounds. I, th I think on this video the sound the sound is actually more stereo for some reason. Not on this particular part, but on the video camera itself. Eh, the sound is actually wider. Well, it sounds wider, I don't know. Maybe that's something on the settings. But uh, yeah, and then you pick pick your folder. This tells you how much space you've got on the folder that you're saving that to. Yeah, you, know, you just press start, and uh, it can take uh, quite a while to uh, produce your videos, especially if you've got a low power computer. So yeah. You can create CDs, DVDs, whatever. So basically, that's a. Uh, uh, maybe doesn't. Uh, sorry, I maybe don't sound very informative about this, but I've been using it, but I, but I can I can easily get lost using it. Put it that way. I know some of it, and uh, some of it. Uh, I try and I just get totally lost. But uh, yeah, that's Power Director. This a uh, version I'm using just now is 18. When I first bought it, it was uh, Power Director 14, and I just upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. I think it's costing the reason of a hundred pound to buy this. But uh, there are certain times that have discounts, uh, and for certain times of year, Christmas and other. Eastern and such like, the, not the prices down a bit. Uh, as I said, this was Power Director 18, the next one is Power Director 365. Now that is a pay-as-you-go monthly subscription, but you do get a lot more bits and bobs and you get a lot more stuff. So, if, if you do a lot of heavy-duty stuff, that's probably the one you want to get, could you get a lot of cloud and all that as well. Cloud uh, saving. As you do on this, I don't use that. I just, I just save everything to hard drive. Uh, of which I'll have to get a bigger one. So, as I said, I've, I've tried to give you an explanation. I hope that it helps a little bit. But uh, just, just to let you know that. I, does take a lot of work to put these videos out. No, I don't want to save changes because it wasn't meant to happen. I, I'll show you something else when we're up here. There we go. That's my fishing list from 2009, all the fish I've caught, the species and whatnot. But it's spread out like that, it doesn't actually look like a lot of fish. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, then you've got the fishing trips. Let's see, let's try this one. Fishing trips. This is where I keep all my photos uh, of the fish that you find in the top right hand corner of the videos. I normally ha rush off three pictures per fish, so I'd, at least I get a decent one, which takes up a lot of ca uh, memory in your phone and your uh, camera. But uh, you've got that's just one of those things you've got to do. And then I come up, I, I put a, a I do have a little write up uh, where, when, time fished, weather, water, tides, baits, equipment used, rods, reels, uh, hooks, uh, rigs, fish caught, any other odd bits of information. And down here, what time the fish are caught up. Because that can be quite important when you're going out fishing again. You think, oh, I caught all the fish then. And then, oh, I caught the fish around the low tide and then it started quieting down and then it would come back again later in in the tide. 
Uh, that can be a bit helpful. And then at the bottom, did I make a video? Yes, I did. So there's a lot, there's a lot in there. And then I do a report. This is normally for putting up in uh, Facebook or the fishing forums or anywhere it feels like it. I normally put that up with a couple of photos of fish. Uh, trying to be a bit informative. A lot of people say I put an awful lot of information in, but uh, I don't mind. I mean, there's everything up there. And then if you read through, it tells you quite a lot of information too. So, by rights, you shouldn't need to ask me anything about the fishing trip. You should know it all. But uh, people still ask questions, which I don't mind. Yep. So that's that. Uh, Keep going, Paul. Keep going. I'm not going to find it there because that's in the wrong place. This is where I keep all the videos. All the videos that have been made. This is all the pieces that go to make it. I, I store them. And then down the bottom, there's the full videos. I think there's about 74 or something. I never, I didn't think I made so many. But there again, there's fishing videos, there's family videos, there's uh, funny ones as well. Well, I'll try to be funny. Uh, these are videos pre, pre-2015 when it was just starting out. Hello David. Hello. Hello Helen. Nice to meet you. You've got a problem with a, a fish that you caught in the river. Yes. Do you want to come and have a look? That was when the first camera, you could tell by the 4x3 four, four <laughs> uh, thing. Uh, nowadays it's all 16x9. Basically high definition, that isn't high definition. And another error I made there is having the radio running in the background. It doesn't matter if it's speech, if it's music. If you've got run, radio running in the back, uh, even if somebody else brings the music in, you'll get a strike on your videos. I have one already. I've, uh, I've had to delete one. Uh, one was a fishing video and one... Uh, because the uh, music company in Germany didn't like the music. I had no control over it because it was in Stonehaven at the time. It was kids that were swimming. And another one was actually, believe it or not, Kirkcaldy Links Market. It's a fairground. There's always music. I got struck on that one. Uh, half a dozen different companies tried to uh, have a go at me, so I had to take it down. Which doesn't make sense at all. At all, at all. No, not at all. So, yeah. I uh, have a lot of other wee bits and pieces in here. Keep it. Information, that's what it's all about. Keeping information. And I hold a lot of it. So that's a, that's that. I hope, I hope you enjoyed the, the, the quick talk I gave. But uh, as I say, I, I, I use it very basically, so I can't really go into the program as such. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it all the same. And now, how do I stop the screen recorder? <laughs> well, here we come to the, the final part. The penultimate bit. Uh, the last bit. The last bit of the video. A, question, a quick question and answer session. I've had uh, people send me questions and uh, but I can't read them. What's that one? Oh my god, I can read them! Alright! Oh, lovely questions, I tell you. I've got some lovely answers too. Uh, do 
do you think I should use a flying condom, I get asked. Well, only if you're going to make love to a witch, I think. And what do you think of bread? Well, <laughs> two slices of bread, two slices of bread and a pocket crust, you can make a sandwich. What kind of hook do you prefer? I like to start with a right hook and then come in with a left, eh? That's the way to do it. Do you ever dig worms? Lug a rod? Yeah, I dig worms. Whoa! <laughs> what, do you th what do you think of Aberdeen hooks? Well, I think once you get the wheel off them, they work perfectly well. Do you use swivels? Swivel. Yes, I use swivel. <laughs> Is it good to have a stiff tip on a rod? I don't get any complaints with the wife. Do you like floats? Ah, uh, not really. To take two or three flushes to get them to get away. Eh? <laughs> do you ever do any spinning? Well, I'll tell you, I've been known to tell a few tales in my time. What do you think of circle hooks? Well, I think they're perfect for round fish. And what's your favourite line? It was this big. <laughs> and that's the end of the question session. <laughs> Made no sense to me either.